Now that we've done some theorems, we're going to go back and do some theory and look at the concept of equivalence classes, which are a way of saying that two things are similar in some way. So an equivalence class is a relation, which means that it's something that goes between two objects and says something about them. And it follows three rules. The first is reflexivity. which means that for anything that we're talking about, uh, x is going to be related to x. And this um, squiggle is going to represent my equivalence relation. The next is symmetry, which says that if x is related to y, then y is related to x. And finally, the third one is transitivity. Which says that if x is related to y and y is related to z, then x is related to z. And so one example of an equivalence class is equals because we know that for every x, x is equal to x, um, that if x is equal to y, then y is equal to x, if x is equal to y and y is equal to z, then x is equal to z. Another example of an equivalence class that we've seen more recently is the idea of things being of the same cardinality. And for this we use the word equinumerous. And so um, x has the same cardinality of x, because we have a bijection from x to x, which is the identity function uh, defined by f of a equals a for all a. Um, the next is symmetry. Uh, and we have this because bijections are invertible and are still bijections when we invert them. So uh, our bijection from x to y well, if we invert it, then we get a bijection from y to x. And finally, the last one, transitivity, is satisfied because we can compose bijections and still get a bijection. So we take our bijection uh, f from x to y and our bijection g from y to z, and we compose them and get a new bijection from x to z. And so now we're going to talk about how to represent an equivalence relation as a set, or sometimes as a class. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to group everything that's equivalent, all the things that are equivalent to each other into one collection, and then all the other things that are equivalent to another thing in a different collection, until we have enough collections that will cover up the whole set over which our equivalence relation is defined. <clears throat> and so in the case of equals and uh, equinumerous, our equivalence classes defined by equivalence relations are going to be proper uh, classes. But we can still look at a smaller example, maybe, um, of these relations defined on a smaller set, and then we'll get a set and we can see some of the um, qualities that it will have. So we're going to look at these two equivalence relations on the set containing singleton 1, singleton 2, and the doubleton 1, 2. And so for uh, the equivalence relation equals, we see that, well, we can take the element 1 and then try to group it with all the things that are equal to it, and there's only one thing. So we get a set that's going to have, this is going to be the set of the equivalence classes, and in the first equivalence class that we made, it's only going to contain the singleton 1, and so there's the singleton 1, and now I'm closing up the set. And similarly for the singleton 2, we get just the one element singleton 2. And similarly, try to find all the things that are equal to the doubleton 1, 2, and we get 
once again just the one element. And so this is the set of equivalence class, classes defined by equals on this set up here. And so now let's see what we get when we use equinumerous as our equivalence relation to define the equivalence class. And so first we'll look at the element 1 and we'll see all the things that are uh, equinumerous to the singleton 1. And so this is a set with only one element and this is also a set with only one element so these two are equivalent to each other but this is not a set with one element so this one doesn't get in the group. So we get a set with two elements one of which is a singleton 1 and one of which is the singleton 2. And so now we can look at the, the singleton 2 but we see that it's already been taken up by this set so we'll skip it. And finally we look at the doubleton 1, 2 and since that's the only set with two elements in the set we get that it is once again just a lone. And so in both of these cases, and what's going to be true in general, is that um, if S is our ambient set, so we're going to say that this is S, and uh, E is, is uh, our set of equivalence classes, so we're going to call this E, then um, for all A and B in E, a intersect B is going to be equal to the empty set. And that's because if the two um, sets, if this one and this one, say, for example, shared an element, then by the transitive property, we could show that they shared all elements, and um, then they would actually be the same thing. So A intersect B equals 0 um, if A is not equal to B. Of course, if A is equal to B, then A intersect B will be equal to A, which will be equal to B. Um, another thing that this is going to satisfy is that the union of all A and E is going to be equal to S. And that's because of the way we constructed it. We, we looked at each element and made sure that it appeared in one of these subsets. So when we union this, this set with two elements and this set with one element, we get the same set with three elements.